The hardest part of all that I went through in the early days of histamine intolerance and mast cell issues was feeling like I was alone in figuring it all out. And oh yeah, I can't forget the brain fog, which made it hard to quickly and concisely explain what was happening. Knowing what I know now, this is what I wish I'd said to my loved ones a year ago. Hi, I'm Monique Loria. Over the past two years, I've received what feels like my master's in histamine from the School of Hard Knocks. From helping my toddler daughter heal from histamine and mast cell issues to supporting one of my best friends heal from stage four cancer, I became intimately familiar with the long-term effects of stress on the body. I now feel compelled to share what I have learned and am still learning on the path to true integrative wellness of the mind, body, and soul. I hope you'll consider following along. If you're in the same position that I was, feel free to forward it along to your friends and family. If this video has been sent to you, please do them the honor of watching the video until the very end. It's the least that you could do for the person who sent it to you. Okay, before I dive into what I wish I had said, I figure it's important to lay a quick foundation of what exactly histamine and mast cells even are for those who might be hearing these words for the very first time. If you are well-versed on the basics, then feel free to skip to this time on the screen where I share the three things I wish I had shared with my loved ones. And honestly, it'll likely answer some of the questions they may have, such as, are they making it up? Why can't doctors help? Is it all just in their head? So the foundation of it all starts with histamine. Histamine is the chemical that is responsible for a few major functions. It communicates messages to your brain. It triggers the release of stomach acid to help with digestion. And it's an important part of your immune response. Now the term histamine intolerance itself is very misleading as we are all familiar with things like lactose intolerance. And so we think, oh yes, that person can't have dairy without a pill. Histamine intolerance is not like that at all. Histamine is a chemical that is within all of our bodies and one does not suddenly become allergic to it. We simply have a bucket of how much histamine our individual bodies can handle and process at a time. When the bucket is overflowing with histamine, then that's what's called a flare. Many of us have likely experienced this before and not been aware of it. Think about a time when you went to your favorite restaurant that you've been to a million times before without issues. But afterwards this time, you bring home some leftovers and eat them the next day, and man, you have to run to the toilet. Now, you might first suspect food poisoning because that's always the one to get blamed. Or perhaps you had an underlying cold and your body was working on sorting it out. And so your body was creating a lot of histamine and your leftovers also had high levels of histamine. And without being aware of that, on top of that, you had a good bit of coffee or alcohol, which actually prevents your body from breaking down histamine. And boom, a perfect storm for a histamine flare. Once your body empties the bucket, which honestly looks different for each person of what their flare looks like, but in our house, it was major GI and bathroom issues. You then, after the flare, get relief until your bucket fills up again. Now, most bodies can manage this histamine bucket the majority of the time, but those with histamine intolerance, either diagnosed or suspected, seem to be stuck in a bit of a constant flare. Ours were every single week, like a horrible ride you just couldn't get off of during the worst times with my toddler daughter. So why might you or your loved one be having issues with their histamine bucket all of a sudden? Well, there are really two main reasons that are known right now. First, the body isn't properly breaking down histamine as effectively as it could be. For those people, it might be optimizing their GI system or supplementing with something like DAO, which is an enzyme that breaks down histamine in the body, and once they get that optimized, they're on their way. Second is a bit more complicated, and that's when our mast cells are involved. Our white blood cells, which are known as mast cells, are throughout our entire body looking for a threat. When they find an invader, such as a bacteria, a fungus, mold, virus, or stressor, they break down and attack that trigger. As a byproduct of their immune or stress response, they create histamine. 
This helps fill up the bucket. So maybe 75% is already full by what your body's created. And so even just consuming a little bit of histamine creates a flare. What many people are experiencing now is that their mast cells are excessively and inappropriately breaking down for things that were previously not a threat. We're talking smells, heat, extreme emotions, household chemicals, and honestly, even sex. Yeah. So if you or your loved ones have had any of these weird aversions, they aren't making it up. Their bodies are reacting in an invisible way to you, but really in an extreme way to these triggers. Their bodies are responding to all of these things just as they would for a threat like a virus or bacteria. However, it's basically creating chaos in the body, and that's when people suspect or try to get a diagnosis for mast cell activation syndrome known as MCAS or some other type of mast cell disorder. The reactions can be so extreme that anaphylaxis can be involved. So this isn't some attention-seeking skit. It can be life-threatening, and that's why we hope our loved ones take it as seriously as we do. I hope you're following along with me so far and that it's making sense. Now that we understand the basics of histamine intolerance and mast cell activation syndrome, I'd love to share the three main things I really wish I could have explained to my friends and family at the beginning of it all. First, traditional Western medicine or allopathic medicine can't really help me. This might be a bold statement to say because we spend a lifetime thinking if we get sick, doctors will help us. However, doctors are trained to match symptoms to a drug in their silo of expertise. However, this one's tough. There is no one pill. Accepting that point is hard. And you or your loved one might be struggling to get this point here. Many of us get bounced around from various doctors, such as the allergist, the gastroenterologist, the endocrinologist, the psychiatrist, and so many more without any success or solutions. Many of those doctors don't even know about MCAS because it wasn't even named until 2017. How many doctors have been in practice and out of med school since then? Most of them. On top of it, it's a multi-system issue, which doesn't fit our siloed approach of specialist. And on top of that challenge is the fact that there's no simple test or easy way to confirm that it is MCAS, leaving people to spend years and tons of money in painful tests like bone biopsies to try to get a diagnosis when they know their system is so out of balance, they just don't know why officially. So here's my tip for loved ones. How can you take the burden off your loved one's shoulders? Can you believe them and honor their weird requests about perfumes or other triggers they may be avoiding? Can you research and purchase organic or low toxic replacements and help them with making swaps in their house? Any lessening of the stress and anxiety burden would go a really long way during this very stressful chapter of life. Even just watching this video and educating yourself more with other videos will really truly mean a lot. On top of it all, many of us have brain fog as one of the symptoms of histamine or mast cell issues, which makes it hard to research and read a peer-reviewed journal article, which really sucks when that's what you have to do to try to survive because traditional doctors don't seem to have the answers. Secondly, I've officially been pushed outside of my comfort zone. In the online support groups, it becomes clear that those who have the most success in getting to the root cause and getting back their quality of life are those who work with either a functional medicine doctor or a holistic naturopath doctor. Now, for many of us, this is something that we haven't had exposure or experience with, and so it's hard to trust and understand how those teammates can help. Using a functional medicine doctor, for example, might require a ton of very expensive tests. On top of that, it's not even guaranteed that you find the right one who's a good partner for you that understands MCAS and histamine intolerance for the same reasons of 2017 being this big shift. So imagine spending thousands of dollars on tests and not really getting a clear answer as to what's going on in your body and what's so off. That's why I'm a big fan of holistic doctors and I made a whole video about the top three things I learned from my holistic doctor because getting outside of my comfort zone is where the answers were for us. 
So here's my tip to loved ones. Can you look up new integrative things to try? Perhaps like a Reiki energy practitioner, a breathwork session, any type of energy healing, a hypnosis session, a meditation group circle, a sound bath. Your company to encourage me to try new things that help me return to center, reduce my stress and anxiety levels, or perhaps even heal some of the underlying issues would really help me to feel that I wasn't going at it alone. And thirdly, mindset is everything. I assure you that the thought of, am I just crazy, has run through our minds many times and we don't necessarily need other people to reinforce that. When we find these Facebook groups with tens of thousands of other people with similar and weird reactions, you feel a lot less alone. If I reference these groups a lot, it's not some kind of, oh, you read it on Facebook, aha, and laugh at us kind of thing to discourage us. It's actually the one place that we don't feel crazy after being gaslit and let down and ignored by traditional medicine. It's where we can get ideas of what we can try and where we hang our hope when we hear about someone who's made it to the other side of this. I think you can probably understand having listen to the video so far of how important stress and anxiety are in this scenario as well, because they both release histamine as a byproduct of a stress response, which just is adding fuel to the fire. There are so many things to be stressed about from what is safe to eat, leaving the house, being around loved ones who might not understand. So my tip to you here is What can you do to help minimize our stress burden by being supportive, encouraging, perhaps making a list of our requirements and sharing it with other family members, advocating for keeping us safe and healthy until we can get to the root cause, resolve it, and return to wellness. Not having to worry about something like that, it'll mean the world, right? It'll help me feel safe because what I need now is I need hope. I need inspiration and I need company. Small gestures, kind words, laughter, not too much, all will make my life and my path to healing that much more enjoyable and not feel like we're alone. I'd be remiss if I didn't share a bit of hope myself. I know when things are really bad and you just can't see your way out of the darkness, it can be hard to imagine that this could possibly ever end, especially since many people in the groups do say there is no solution, there is no cure. But I'm here to say that I just passed the one year anniversary of when I first took my toddler daughter to see our holistic naturopath doctor. In less than one year's time, she made a light year of a difference. And sitting here a year later, I'm so deeply grateful for this partner who helped heal and resolve her root causes so that her body can return to balance. It's incredible to see the progress. And it inspired me a few months ago to take the steps in healing my body and bringing it back to balance as well. And so I hope that her success, my early success, inspires you or your loved ones to do the work and to keep working to find those root causes. Getting to the root cause is the answer for long-term health and wellness. I'm wishing you all the best. And if I can do anything to help you along your way with regards to stress resilience or looking outside of the box using hypnosis, I am more than happy to be a teammate because I've been in your shoes and I know any bit of help will make a huge difference. Sending you and your loved ones all the best on this wellness journey. See you in the next one.